tell me when you guys decided that tackle football was going to be a part of your future. Well, um, in college, I had kind of um, missed the sports, being part of a sports team. And so um, I really wanted to get back into that. And I tried out after graduating, and that was kind of, uh, that was kind of it. It's all history from there. Chrissy, what about you? Um, same thing, college sports, basketball, track, you know, never thought about football ever. Um, had a teammate that I actually played in junior college with, played basketball. She was like, she called me, she was like, this is amazing, you should try it. I talked to my mom, my mom was like, you know, you have the body, you have the athleticism, jump head first in there, and I've been a part of the Bliss ever since. That's fantastic. I, I wonder if you guys feel like because of the uniforms, still pretty skimpy, as I said, the shoulder pads, the helmets, and that's pretty much it. Do you feel like the crowd is appreciating your athleticism, Dina, or do you feel like eye candy still? Um, we definitely are very confident, and we don't focus at all on the uniform. Like, we are, have worked so hard for the bodies we have, and we, we don't care to show them off. Like, right when we put those helmets on, um, we forget about the uniform, and we forget about, you know, what we're wearing because we're focusing on the game, and that's what we want everyone else to do. And with me, like, I compared a track pitcher with uh, the uniform I'm actually playing in now. No different. I give credit to like the people that come out the first time and they're like, oh my God, I want to go see, I want to see if it's like anything like mud wrestling or anything like that. But that's the very first time. If they come back, it's because they love the game, they love the athletes, and it's more than what they thought it would be. Yeah, but the one thing that's different about football and track is no one's trying to hurt you in track, which is different because you guys don't wear pads or anything on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find you put yourself at risk for injury? I mean, for sure. Yeah. It's worth it though. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much fun. Like, my dad, he was the one person I was so worried about. And the first game, I didn't tell him what we were playing. And I just said, Dad, I'm playing football for Chicago. Come check me out. His, his, my twin brother and him came out. And at warm-ups, they just kind of crossed their arms. And they were just standing there looking like, you know, two giants. And I, was, I wouldn't even look up there. I just kept my head down. And um, as soon as kickoff and I was re returning the ball, he came all the way down to the thing. He kind of put his hands up on me. He's like, you're going to be a star in this league. And I was like, thank you, Dad. So I knew from then he was OK. Man, that's got to feel so good. That's got to mean so much. Uh, moving forward, right now, you guys don't get paid. You actually have to pay to be in this league. It's a very small fee, $45, something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. But, Dina, do you feel like that could change soon? Do you feel like the crowds are big enough and growing where maybe you could turn this into a profession someday? Um, that that would be nice. Um, I don't have that as a plan for my future. I do have a full-time job, and I like the fact that I am able to balance that full-time job and, um, you know, come to practice and work on the field. Because I feel like um, I'm doing more. I'm doing more than just work during the day. And I've learned a ton of like, how to balance and be very, you know, structured. And I mean, it's a struggle, but that would be, it, it would be great to be paid too. But yeah. It's not in my plans. Okay, so you guys still have uh, full-time jobs, as you said, and you still have goals outside the football field. But this new docu-series is now going to follow you throughout the season. It's called Pretty Strong, Pretty Strong. which I think is very cute. It's yeah. on Oxygen Network, so it's going to be catered mostly towards women, I would uh, assume, with Oxygen Network. What are people going to be surprised to find out about you guys? Chris? How spicy we are. <laughs> like, like, and then, like, what we overcome and what we have to deal with, like, you know, balancing lives, like Dina said, and, you know, still being able to get up. Like, some mornings I'm up at 3.30 in the morning because I have to get to work. I'm a personal trainer. Yeah. But, you know, and then we still up at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning because yeah, we're we, making it home from practice. Practice like, is at night, so. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's still very empowering, you know what I mean, to watch home. us, you know, and, and watch the sisterhood and, everything like how we we have moms and dentists yeah. and you know singers and yeah all it's just amazing to literally see each of us with such different lives outside of football and like we come together on the field and make it happen we've won and it's it's kind of it just is amazing to watch because yeah. even we if are you don't so like football different. or even if you don't like you know docu-series or anything like that you'll love it like it's something the husbands can sit down and watch with the wives and not feel you know you know, girly about it. Okay. You, know? you don't love each other all well, the time. Yeah, no, what is the culture time. like in the locker room? You mentioned so many different types of people coming together on this team for one goal. What's it like if we were to be a fly on the wall in the locker room? It's Organized a, chaos. It's emotional. It's it's a, a roller coaster, really, because yeah. you don't know what somebody had going on the night before mm -hmm. with their family or something else going on in their lives that might be affecting them that day. And I mean, I just think emotions are running high. But at if you all think of it like a family set, Nobody knows what's going on in people's family. But in this set, you get to see everything that we, what's going on from the time we get to practice to the time, the game time, mm -hmm. or why we played so crappy in the game because of how we practice. Yeah. So like you actually, it's, it's out loud. Like we're actually living out loud. Yeah, people may not know this. You guys watch film. You break yeah. down tape. Oh. 
I mean, the, how many hours out of the week are you dedicating to playing football? Crazy amount. Practice yeah. three or four hours twice a week, then film sessions, then games, and traveling. You still the have to work out and lift, you working know, and out, training. Extra. Yeah, it's so much like the guys do for sure. And Dean, I know you mentioned you have a full time job. You guys both do, but you're just doing this really for fun and for an outlet. But I'd love to know from you, Chrissy. We saw Jen Welter, for example. She mm -hmm. used to play in the Women's Professional Football League, and then it led to a coaching internship with the Arizona Cardinals and it's opened all these doors for her. Mm -hmm. Do you hope that football opens up doors for you? I, I, I definitely do, and it's opening up doors now. I mean, for different people that I've gotten to train and different things like that. But I'm excited about it. Like, we are the f fastest female rising sport right now. And, yes, it, it will be something that women and young girls can look up to and be able to do later on in life. I'm excited about being one of the pioneers of our league. I think that is amazing. We're setting all the records. The Chicago Bliss have all the records. We have all the all-stars. We have anything that you need to break later on to be great or be Hall of Fame or anything like that. We're setting all those we're setting the tone. So That's I'm excited amazing. about that. I'm so excited about it. You're giving it. fans in Chicago something to look forward to, obviously. Oh, yeah. The Bears not doing so hot. Uh, well, let's finish it up. We do have the Blackhawks. <laughs> That's true. We'll yeah. finish it up on this. Uh, how has playing football in the LFL changed your life? It's really been a family that I know I could come to um, when I'm kind of down or like as much as you don't want to go to practice some nights because you're exhausted. I don't ever regret going, like end up ending up to go because it's just like girls that I can talk to about my day or like things that are going wrong and they always lift lift me up and I feel more comfortable there. So it's been it's been nice. And then with me, I'm from Kansas, so like it's my home away from home. But then also it's like you know outside of that, nobody ever knew that I would be in Chicago in general or you know away from home and. It's just, it's a wonderful feeling to like actually go and be downtown Chicago and people are like, oh my God, I know you. You're, you're the running back. You get recognized on the street. All the time. And Chase Bank, hair all over my head, no makeup. <laughs> yes. And they know Dina. They yeah. know Dina. Like, I know Dina. Like, you got to play a Dina. skill position. Then that, you yeah. got no, all the glory. Everybody knows know Dina, yeah. too. It's they a, it's give me a, glory, though. It's a group yeah. of us. Like, everybody knows who we are in Chicago and they show us a lot of love. And it's, it's, it's unreal. Like, it's unreal. It's so unreal. She couldn't yeah. score if I didn't make those blocks. Oh, yeah, no. Could he score once? All love to the offensive line all the time oh, if you're yes. running back and quarterback. <laughs> uh, Dina and Chrissy, thank you guys so thank much. You for